In this video, I'm going to walk through how to calculate the Black-Scholes option pricing model in Excel, and then how to use data tables to identify the changes in the call and put values with a change in the Black-Scholes option pricing model variable. So we're going to start here. I've got a document that shows the uh, calculation here for the Black-Scholes option pricing model, and we're going to be calculating the value of C. Uh, C is the uh, value of the call option. And we're going to do this based on calculating D1 and D2. And we use D1 and D2 in the calculation or the formula for the call option. Here we, we look up, it, it shows here ND1 and ND2. For ND1, we use D1 to, count, to look up the probability that a deviation less than D1 will occur in a standard normal distribution. And for D2, we do the same. We uh, find the probability, we use that to find the probability that a deviation of less than D2 will occur in a standard normal uh, distribution. And we use that uh, through a function in Excel. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'll be referencing the document here as I go through the um, Excel workbook. And the Excel workbook looks like this. I just have uh, labels for each of the variables, uh, stock price, strike price, or the exercise price, the risk-free rate, the dividend yield, the time to expiration, and the volatility. And the volatility is the underlying, is the volatility of the underlying stock. And we'll use those to calculate D1 and D2 first. Then we'll use those values to look up ND1 and ND2. And then finally, we're going to calculate the call value using our equation here. Uh, from that, and because of put call parity, we can then calculate the put value. And then I'll show you another way to calculate the put value more directly. So uh, let's start here. I'm just going to put some variable, variable values in here. And then we're going to name these variables in the name box. So up here I'm going to put stock price and we're just going to start off by calculating the value of an at the money call. So I'm going to put the stock price here is $50 and the strike price also is $50. So I'm going to uh, move my cursor up here to the name box and I'm going to name D2 as uh, stock and then I'm going to name D, uh, D3 as strike for the stock price and the strike price. The risk-free rate we're going to say is 5% or 0.05 and I'll name that box risk-free. And the dividend yield, we'll say this, this stock currently has a dividend yield of 2% so we'll put 0.02 there. And I will name this div yield. Time to expiration, this is this is uh, put in as years, in, in terms of years. So I'm gonna put in here one year to expiration. And then I'll name this time. And then finally volatility, um, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as sigma as well. And uh, we'll put in here that the volatility of the underlying stock is about 30% or the standard deviation of the underlying stock is about 30% per year. So I'll put in 0 0.30 here. And then I'll name this um, uh, volatility. So our calculation for D1 looks like this. So we in our numerator it's the natural log of the stock price today divided by the strike price plus the risk-free rate minus the dividend yield plus and in parentheses sigma squared divided by 2 and then multiplying the entire argument here from the risk-free rate through the sigma squared by t. And then we're gonna take that numerator, we're gonna divide it by sigma multiplied by the square root of time. Okay. So I'm gonna start here, D1, I'm gonna put in equals, and because I wanna separate out my numerator and my denominator, I'm going to start off by um, putting in open parentheses, and this, this first set of parentheses is going to be used to um, divide up the numerator and denominator. And then I'm gonna put in here natural log, stock because I've named my variables I don't have to you know move, move things around I can just type in the variable name stock divided by strike close parentheses plus open parentheses risk free minus div yield plus open parentheses 
volatility and I want to square this so that's squared and then I'm going to divide that by two close parentheses close parentheses again and I'm going to multiply that by time oh sorry multiplied by time then I'm going to close the parentheses there so that gives me my numerator then I'm going to divide that by and then open parentheses volatility multiplied by the square root and in Excel that's SQRT of time and then close parentheses again. So this is what your D1 should look like and if I did this correct and I did uh, the answer here is 0.25 D2 is then equal to D1 minus volatility times the square root of time. So it's negative 0.05. So now we're going to use Excel to find the probability that D1 and D2 or a value less than D1 or D2 will occur. So here I'm going to put in equals norm.s.dist and this gives me the um, returns the standard normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 and our value our z value for nd1 is d1 and so it says cumulative and we want true then nd2 is equal to the same thing, norm dot, oh, norm dot s dot dist. Our z value here is d2. And we also want to put true here. And so now we're going to go and calculate the call value. So our call value is equal to the stock price multiplied by the exponential function discounted, you know, which discounts the raised to the power of k minus t, which is our dividend yield, multiplied by time. And then we multiply that by nd1. And from that we subtract the, the strike price multiplied by the exponential function raised to the power of the negative risk-free rate multiplied by time. And we multiply that by nd2. So to calculate the call value, I'm going to start here and put stock, the stock price multiplied by EXP and then uh, open parentheses um, negative dividend yield multiplied by time multiplied by ND1 and then we're going to subtract the strike price multiplied by EXP open parentheses negative risk-free multiplied by time and then we're going to multiply that by ND2 and that gives us a call value of six dollars and fifty one cents our put value then so let me open up the document again so there's two ways to calculate a put value. Um, I'll demonstrate both just to show you that they provide the same answer. Um, the first one is using the call value and we get this from uh, put call parity where we can create two different portfolios. In this case it would be a, um, a put option plus the stock price uh, discounted back to today at the dividend yield is equal to the call value plus the strike price discounted back to today at the risk-free rate. So that's our first um, option there. And then our second option is just a more direct option where we take um, our D1 and D2 and we make them negative and we, we find an, you know, in negative D1 and negative in D2. And I'll show you how to do that one as well. But let's start off with our, our um, uh, using our call value here. So for this one, I'm going to set, set this equal to the call value, the, the cell just above it minus the stock price times EXP 
negative, and we're gonna again use the dividend yield here, multiplied by time, plus the strike price, multiplied by EXP, open parentheses negative risk-free rate, multiplied by time. Okay. And that gives us a value of $5.06. And that's to be expected here because the uh, an at for an at the money option, the call value will be greater than the put value unless the dividend yield is greater than the risk-free rate. And so you can get some cases there where um, the put value can be higher if the dividend yields high enough. Um, using our, our more indirect method, or our, excuse me, our more direct method here. Um, so I'm going to take uh, the the put value is equal to the strike price. Uh, discounted back at the risk-free rate multiplied by n negative d2 and so what we have to do here is actually look up the value of um, n negative d2 or have rather have Excel do that for us and the value of negative uh, n negative d1 sometimes the, the mistake I see people people make here is that they'll just put a negative sign in front of um, ND1 or ND2, and that's not what we're doing. We're actually using a different probability um, there. So um, we'll go ahead and do this here. So I'm gonna put in here equals uh, the, uh, the stock price, or excuse me, the strike price, multiplied by E, uh, negative, or excuse me, multiplied by EXP, open parentheses, negative risk free rate, multiplied by time, multiplied by, and so this is where I'm going to use that uh, normal um, uh, norms dist, norm.s.dist function in Excel. And so I'm gonna make this negative, and just to show you this again, so I'm gonna start with D2. So negative, and we're gonna use the D2 value here. And then comma, and then true. And now we're going to subtract out the stock price. Discount it back. today and then I'm going to use norm dot excuse me norm dot s dot dist again and then I'm going to put negative and then the d1 value and then comma and then true and that provides the same answer as I did before and let me just pull that up just for a second for you um, it's kind of a long equation there um, So now that we have these all calculated, we can now um, use data tables to determine the, the, the change in the value of the option due to a change in the value of the different variables. And what I have here is the delta. So the delta is the change in the value of the option due to a change in the value of the underlying um, asset, in this case being the stock. So in order to create a data table here, I'm going to um, put my cursor in cell D17, and I'm gonna set this equal to the call value. And then I'm gonna put my uh, cursor in uh, cell E17. I'm gonna set this uh, equal to the put value. So now I'm going to highlight my my two values here, my column, my put, and then one column over uh, the C column, I'm gonna drag that down. And so what I'm saying in this is that the values here in, in column C are the, the values for the stock price. And we're seeing what's happening to the value of the call and the put with a difference, a change in the stock price. So I've highlighted that, I'm going to go to data, and then what if analysis? and data table. 
So there's two options here. There's a row input cell and a column input cell. We're only going to change, we're only going to change one variable. If we were going to change two variables, we would use the row and column input cells. But in this case, because we're just changing one variable, we're going to change, we're just going to use the column input cell. So go ahead and put your cursor there. And the variable we're changing is the stock price. So we want to select that value there. And so what this is going to do is it's going to give you the call values and the put values for different stock prices. So uh, what we see here is, is what we would kind of expect is that as the value of the stock increases, the value of the call, call va the call value increases. And as the value of the stock increases, the value of the put decreases. So now to make this uh, look a little bit nicer, I'm going to hide these two values here. First, I'm going to uh, select the call and the put values. I'm going to go to format cells and then I'm going to select custom and and if, if it doesn't pull it up the right way for you select number when you go to uh, format cell so it might come show up as the font select number and then go to custom and then just up here in type uh, put in two semicolons and what that'll do is it'll make the uh, the, the values invisible there and, and then what we can do here is we can highlight all of our information here and go to insert and charts and I like to use a scat um, the scatter plots smooth scatter plots for these so you can see here the values uh, the relationship between the stock price which is the value on our x-axis uh, and the the effect of the change in this value on the values of the call which what we see here is it increases as the stock price increases and the put value and the put value decreases as the stock price increases so that's it for this video please let me know if you have any questions